Okay, welcome to your first month's class. This is a follow along class. We're going to be covering the stances, the footwork, and the stepping of Tai Chi Kung Fu. So in this class, like I said, it's follow along. Just do as much as you can. What you're going to do is you're going to practice this at least three times a week in order to see improvement before going on to your next month's class. Okay. What's really important about the Tai Chi footwork is that it's unique that our levels, the way that we change levels and the angles that we create through our stepping is what's unique. It's why other styles, like some of the Mantis Kung Fu's have copied Monkey Kung Fu footwork in the past because of the, the uniqueness of it, the way that we're able to create angles. So let's go ahead and begin here. We're gonna start with the tall monkey stance. So our rear foot is completely forward. Our front foot is turned down on the side. Both knees are bent, hips are open, core is tight chest and shoulders are relaxed and now from the side view here just so you can see if you put your arms all the way out bend them about halfway and your palms are slightly turned in this is a good start for your tall monkey stance if you need more details on that please see your month one lessons and you'll go more into it the weight distribution here is 60 percent on the rear leg 40 percent on the front leg okay this class is very simple so we're not going to do a warm-up here all we're doing is just holding this stance here and we're gonna transition from stance to stance. So from here, we are in a tall monkey stance. We're going to bring our left leg back. We're going to bring our foot in and step back, switching our hands. Whatever leg is forward, that hand is forward. This is called C-step. Legs together, step forward, C-step. Legs together, step forward. Legs together, step forward. I'm maintaining my weight distribution, so I'm still keeping whatever leg is in the rear. My 70%, or sorry, 60% is on that, that rear leg, 40% on my front leg. It's a very simple and effective step. What it's doing is maintaining my stance structure as I'm moving. And again, you're just following along here. Okay, if you need more details on the stance itself, please see your lesson one in month one. Okay, this is a C step. C step from a tall monkey stance. Okay, well now we're going to increase the difficulty here a little bit. We're going to C-step. As we come back, we're going to C-step into a light monkey stance. Light monkey stance, just a quick review. Rear foot is pointed directly out to the side. Ball of your front foot is on the ground. 70% of minimum, 70% of your weight is on your rear leg. Should be hardly anything, 30% or less on your front leg. So you should be able to kick up and throw a quick quick kick from this stance here because there's hardly any weight here. This is like your jab, a jab of Tai Chi, right? Be able to throw this front kick out very quickly. So we're in a tall monkey stance, C-step, back to light monkey. C-step, light monkey. Light monkey is a defensive stance. And again, you're just following along as I'm talking here. C-step, forward stance. This is your aggressive fighting stance. Aggressive fighting, okay? Remember my chin is down, my eyes are forward. I don't wanna have head up. I wanna make sure my chin is down, protect myself at all times. C-step, light monkey stance. C-step, light monkey stance. C-step, light monkey stance. C-step, light monkey stance. Now, if you notice, I'm adding angles to it. So I'm no longer going just straight forward. A good way to practice this, if you're new, is to put a line of tape on the ground, and you always wanna make sure that you're facing into that line of tape. So here, I'm going to C-step forward, cut out, bring my right leg out to the rear side, so I'm facing into that line. C-step forward, rear leg comes out, facing into that line. C-step forward, facing into that line. Same thing when I C-step backwards, light monkey stance, facing into that line, right? Cutting, this cutting an angle. So what makes Tai Xing very unique. C-step back, okay? Keeping my guard up, keeping my chin down throughout the entire movement, throughout the entire movement. Now C-step forward, still can maintain that light monkey stance. The hard part here is making sure that you don't get too forward heavy, okay? We don't want to get too forward heavy into that light monkey, then we go into a tall monkey stance instead of staying into that light monkey stance. We're not striking, all we're doing is working on stepping. If you can't master the basics, you'll never master the advanced technique, especially in Tai Chi. C-step forward, 
cutting into that angle. See, step forward, cutting into that angle. Think of that tape on the ground or that chalk line, whatever you're using, as your opponent. Again, I'm going slow, this is basics. Okay, I'm not trying to go fast here. I wanna make sure that every time I step, that my feet are in the correct position, my hips are open, I have the proper weight distribution, hands are in the correct spot, chin is down, eyes are open, tongue on palate, teeth are clenched, all those proper mechanics for a stance. You can do this, you'll be able to get the more advanced techniques of Tai Chi. And this goes for any martial art. No matter what martial art you're doing, whether it be boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, karate, whatever you're working on, if you don't master your basics, you don't master your stance work, you're not gonna get very far. The basics is what wins fights. More people get knocked out from a jab and a cross than they do almost any other technique. Why? Because it's a basic technique, because we drill it over and over and over, at least those who practice it a lot. All right, so now we're gonna transition into a low monkey stance. Again, this is all following along here. Low monkey stance. Weight distribution is 50-50. We're going to step forward. Step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. Come up, tall monkey stance, step back, light monkey stance. 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 See, step forward. Tall monkey stance. Step forward, tall monkey stance. Step forward, tall monkey stance. Step forward, tall monkey stance. One more time, step forward. Now I'm gonna transition, dropping my level back to a low monkey stance, stepping back. As I step, remember your lesson. Keep the C's, hands at C's. That nice C there is gonna do a lot for you in the future when you get into your blocking lessons. Step forward, one, two, Three, four, five. Come up, tall monkey stance. C step back, light 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 monkey. Light monkey. Transition, tall monkey. Tall monkey. Tall monkey. Tall monkey. Tall monkey. Tall monkey. Lower your stance. Step back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hang out down here and come up. So remember, as you're doing these techniques, this is a line drill. It's basically your first line drill. You want to transition from tall to light to low in any order. It doesn't matter which order. Okay, so we're going to change it up a little bit here. We're going to combine all three together. Tall monkey stance. C step forward, tall monkey stance. Step back, light monkey stance. Drop, low monkey. Step forward, come up, tall monkey stance. Step back, light monkey stance. Drop, low monkey stance. Step forward, cut the angle. Step up, tall monkey stance. Step back, drop. Step forward, come up. Light monkey, drop, back up. Good. So again, with Taishing, angles and levels. We'll work on speed later. You have to get proper mechanics. As I'm dropping my stance, I'm almost, I'm not just squatting, right? This would be me squatting into a stance. I'm not gonna get to that very quickly, okay? Remember in Taishing, we're not always gonna fight in a low monkey stance. It's transitioning there, so do one or two moves and coming back up to a standing stance. So, I'm in my tall monkey stance. I'm here, and I'm almost gonna drop. I'm almost gonna, like I'm finishing a jump squat, relaxing my whole lower body, using my feet to pull me into the ground, pushing my hips back as I squat, okay? So, imagine like you jumped, and you're coming down, you almost want that same type of feeling. That's how you know you're doing it properly. So here, tall monkey stance, C-step, drop, back up. C-monkey, tall, drop, up. Tall monkey, C-cup, drop, back up. Again, changing levels is what makes Taishing extremely efficient. Okay, 
because your opponent doesn't guess where you're coming. If you hang down there too low, yes, you will get kicked towards the head. Kaixing has techniques that help mitigate that. Remember, something only works if you practice it efficiently and practically. Tall monkey stance, C-step, light monkey, drop, back up tall monkey. See how as I come up, I spread my legs right into my stance position. I'm keeping my hip open. I don't want my knees to close my hip. I want to make sure that my hips stay open. If you keep your hips closed, you're not going to be able to move quickly or efficiently. Okay, so we're going to add to this drill now. Light monkey stance. Step forward. Okay, now we're going to do what's called a drag foot. Right, monkey drags his tail. We're dragging our rear foot behind us. We're not picking it up and C-stepping. This is another way of stepping in Tai Shing. So as I step, I'm picking my front foot off the ground, taking a small step forward, dragging my rear foot behind me, making sure that I keep the hips open, that my knees are bent, and that I have proper foot position, that my feet don't get splayed. If my feet don't face towards my target, my power is automatically cut in half. That goes for any martial art. Here, step, drag, 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 drag. Now if you're gonna do this in reverse. I'm picking up my rear foot, dragging my front foot back. Pick up my front foot, drag my front foot back. Same thing. This is a slow aggression. So what that means is if I'm striking on someone, if I'm sparring or fighting with someone and I don't want to rush in, they seem I'm still trying to get the feel on them. I don't want to just go in head to head. That's not how Tai Shing fights. I want to make sure that I'm understanding what I'm getting myself into. This is a slow aggression. I'm not really worried about cutting an angle because when later you'll learn you can block and cut an angle, right? And that's usually how Tai Shin likes to do it. But it's just me feeling it out. Or if I want to be aggressive, I want to use one of my different monkeys. Tall, stone, lost, drunken, wood, knight, any of the six monkeys of Tai Shin. I'm feeling out my opponent with this stepping. Testing my distance control. Reactivity, distance control, timing are three things that make up any good fighter. Again, it doesn't matter what martial arts style you do. If you don't have those three uh, skills, you're not going to be proficient in it. Okay, let's switch sides here. Left side forward. Sorry, right side forward. Dragging the left foot. Step, drag the left foot. Step, drag the left foot. You will only do this type of stepping in the tall monkey stance. Same thing. Step, we're going to step with the back foot, drag the front foot back. Step with the back foot, drag the front foot back. This is not a big step. This is not a quick step. All this is, is just testing my distance. Okay, let's do the same thing forward. One more time. Elbows down, hands faced in, chin down, tongue on palate. Step back, drag the front foot. Good. So that's your basic stepping. Those are your three basic stances. Again, you can always see your month one lessons if you want to get a little bit more into that. Now we're going to do something called the double step. Double step has to do with distance control. So what I'm doing, I'm using that drag foot, and I'm quick stepping it. Step, step. So basically, as soon as my front foot touches, I'm pushing off again. You can do this as a double or a triple. But either way, I want to make sure that as soon as this foot touches, I'm pushing myself forward, pushing myself forward. But I don't want to change my stance now. I don't want to lean into this. I don't want to get into this where now I'm very heavy leg forward. The problem with that is when you get kicked in the front leg, you have a lot of weight on it. It does a lot more damage than if you don't. It's easier to check a kick if you have less weight on that front leg. That's why Muay Thai likes to do that, that kind of squared off teep stance, right? Tai Shing, we like to keep our stances mobile so I can change it to my different levels or my light monkey stance whenever I want to. So let's work on the double step. I'm gonna do this from a side view here so you can see. Guard, step, 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 okay? You're gonna have a slight lean forward, that's fine, but don't overdo it. Make sure that you're keeping that hip pushed back over that rear leg. Same thing with the left side forward. Step, 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 step. Backwards, step, 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 step. I'm dragging my front foot as I'm doing it. The important part of dragging the foot is so you don't get swept. Anytime I pick my foot up as it lands, 
it's easy for someone to kick that foot out from underneath me and trying to trip me or sweep me. This helps prevent that. So what we're doing here, if they were to kick out my front foot as I'm dragging my rear foot, since I have most of my weight here on my rear foot, it's gonna be harder to move me. That might knock me out of direction, but it won't knock me down. I would personally rather be knocked into a different direction than knocked down on the ground. From a front view, forward step, double step. One, two. One, two. Backwards. One, two, dragging the front foot. One, two. This is distance control. You're creating or gaining distance between you and your opponent. Left side forward. Step, 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 step. Backwards, step, 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 step. Don't change the direction of your feet. It's very easy when you go backwards to so wanna change that rear foot out to the side. Make sure you keep that rear foot turned in towards your opponent because at any point you can come in with counters. Again, we're not gonna go over striking in this video. It's just going to be the footwork, stepping, and stances. Okay, so now we're gonna get into pivoting. We've covered double step, retreating step, all three of our different Taishing stances, tall monkey stance, light monkey stance, low monkey stance. Now we're going to cover pivoting. What is pivoting? Pivoting is basically cutting an angle without trying to take a wide step. So we're gonna plant the ball of our foot down on the ground. We're gonna push off with our rear leg. We're gonna do just 45 degrees at a time. So if you want, you can make like a big plus sign on the ground, put your foot in the middle of that plus sign. You can do this with spray paint with really with anything, tape, paint, spray paint, uh, string, anything, chalk, whatever you wanna do. Put your foot in the middle of that and you're gonna push off with the rear leg. Step, 45 degrees. So now it should be facing that corner box. Step, now it should be facing the line. Step, facing corner box. Step on the line. Step, corner box. Step on the line. Step, corner box. Step on the line. Okay, that's called an outside pivot. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my rear foot, pushing myself to the outside of my opponent. If the line is my opponent, right? And I step out to the side, I now have a better angle for striking. Okay, and then we're gonna cover a different couple types of pivoting here, so pay attention. You can do this from any of the stances. Right now we're doing it from the tall monkey stance. If I wanna do this from my light monkey stance, I'll do the same thing. I'll push my weight to my rear leg, 70%. I'm gonna put the ball of my foot down. Quick step, quick step, quick step, quick step, quick step, quick step. Okay, you have to be very, very quick. You have to push off very powerful when you're doing these. If you don't, you're gonna end up transitioning too much weight to the front leg. And again, we already talked about why it's dangerous to keep too much weight on your front leg. Some fighters do it because it puts them into the fight. It's a mental thing. They put themselves into the fight by pushing themselves forward. Right? It's a mentality. It's an all, all in or all nothing type of mentality. Touching doesn't have that. <clears throat> okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing from a low monkey stance. So it's gonna be a little bit different. So we're gonna come down to a low monkey stance. With our pivoting here, we're actually going to put a fist down. So I'm gonna keep one hand up and we're gonna step out to the side, okay? You're not really gonna be in one spot when you do this. You're gonna have to step and pivot at the same time. So if I'm here, I'm cutting, If I, this is my line, right? This is my line of tape. I'm putting my line on that line of tape, my fist on that line of tape, and I'm stepping, pivoting into it. I put my hand over here, stepping, pivoting into it, almost like a little hop. Putting my fist down on the line, Stepping over into it, keeping one hand up. As long as you have one hand up, it's gonna be harder for someone to just get a clean shot at your head. And you can always bring a hand in front of your face. You can always bring the other hand up. There's a lot of things you can do. Remember, you're not gonna be feet stuck in mud. Feet stuck in mud, the way my seat explains it, means this, you're not doing this when you fight, right? You're gonna be moving around. You're gonna kind of be light on your feet, move around, right? Changing your stances, high, light, low, back to the high, right? All those different stance changes are gonna come a major play when you're getting to your sparring and fighting techniques. Okay, so we covered an outside pivot. We're gonna cover an inside pivot now. What is an inside pivot? Just the opposite of an outside pivot. So we're taking a rear foot. Instead of stepping behind us, out behind us, we're stepping in. If my opponent is charging in towards me, I can block out, slow mid block, I'm over with a palm. Just giving you an application idea of how pivoting works. And again, we're not going to necessarily be still. We're just practicing here. Step over. 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 Step
step back. Step over 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45. Very basic, okay? So that's just practicing the pivot, understanding how does this work. Now we're gonna practice that same technique with stepping, so that's how you're gonna use it. We're gonna cover a, a check step. I'm sorry, check pivot. So facing my line here, step, pivot out towards the outside. Come back to neutral. Step, pivot towards the inside. Okay, so it's a little bit different. We first started by C-stepping, right? And that C-step allowed us to change direction and to cut the angle. Now what we're doing is we're same side stepping, but pushing off with that rear leg so we can cut, so we can cut that angle off of the pivot. Okay, let's do it again here. Step, pivot out. Okay, back to guard. Step, pivot out. Okay, inside pivot, outside pivot. Either way, you're letting them come into you. You're gauging that distance. You're timing it perfectly. Our opponent comes in towards me, step, pivot. So a cue, hook, whatever you want to throw. You have plenty of different techniques that you'll, that you'll learn over the course of these 42 months of program that you'll be able to work on for sparring and applications. Step, pivot to the inside. Step, pivot to the outside. Step, pivot to the inside. Step, pivot to the outside. This is excruciatingly extraordinarily important when you get into the boy gim soy cue hammer fist because that's all it does is teach you this pivot allowing that rear leg to swing your body don't focus on trying to just turn your upper body right if i if my feet don't move but i turn my upper body it does me no good because my feet are in the same place it's easy to get taken down have your legs kicked out from underneath you swept thrown right you want to make sure that you're always moving here step pivot out Light monkey stance, low monkey stance, pop back up, C step, pivot out, light monkey stance, low monkey stance, come back up, C step, pivot out, light monkey, low monkey, back up. This is how you practice stances. I cannot explain how crucial and how important stances are, not just for your forms, not just for your sparring, but it's your foundation, right? A lot of people talk about foundation, but very few show how to practice a stance. Remember, MMA is not a style. MMA is a combination of a bunch of different martial arts, right? Traditionally, or mainly it's Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, things like that. Boxing, kickboxing, Judo, whatever. <coughs> tai Shing, because there's six different monkeys that are taught in Tai Shing, it's its own type of MMA type of training because they're all different ways of fighting. You have Tall Monkey Stance, you have Lost Monkey, you have stone monkey you have drunken monkey right you have wood monkey you have a lot of different fighting capabilities that all teach different things that makes it a very unique style but if you don't master the stances you're not going to get very far in this type of training this type of training is hard that's why you don't see a lot of people do it so you don't see a lot of people practice low stance training it kills your legs it's okay over time it gets better i had someone leave us a comment um nick was telling me about nick is the one who posts all these Vic and Jaira, but how someone won a karate tournament just because they were able to practice their stances more, because they were able to strengthen their legs more. That's great, that makes me very proud. Even though you're not part of one of our courses, I'm very glad that you're able to get something out of Tai Chi. Every martial art has its own benefits, right? Just depends on what you're gonna practice, what are you gonna use to make it worthwhile. This punch, right, can be in boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, Kung Fu, there's a thousand different types of Kung Fu for those of you who don't know that. Judo, really any type of martial art. Sambo, uh, Krav, it's really endless, right? But a punch is a punch. There are different ways to throw a punch. There could be a stiff jab. There could be a feeler jab. There could be a quick jab. There can be a double retreat jab. There could be a quick triple jab on the inside, right? There's a lot of different ways you can throw the same technique. Different disciplines will teach different ways to do it. That's fine. Practice it. Make sure that you practice it practically, right? Can't express that enough. Same thing with these stances. If I'm here, I don't want to just practice this stepping. You're never going to spar like this. Sorry, it's not going to happen. Your sparring is going to be here. Lock, counter, drop, grab, back fist, up here, right? Cover, back, kick, back and forth, right? 
playing that multiple stances. But the only way you're going to get into those different stances is by practicing this at least a few times a week. Okay, so we're going to kind of recap here everything that we've gone over. So we have our C step, tall monkey stance, forward and backwards, cutting an angle with each one. We have our light monkey stance, C stepping in to that different stance, cutting an angle. Make sure that we have proper weight distribution, forwards and backwards. We have pivoting with all of these, right? Pivoting in, pivoting out, pivoting out, transitioning, pivoting, transitioning, transitioning, popping back up. Those are all the different things that you learned from this video. That's the basic, I can't explain off. This is just the basics of Tai Chi stepping. Hope you enjoyed the video. Again, practice as many as you can, as many times per week. It's about 30 minutes worth of practice a day is sufficient. This is a follow along video. You can always add your own as well and combine it with what you've already learned through our MSCR course. My name is Sigfu Barber. Hope you enjoyed the lesson and we'll see you next month.